It has become commonplace to claim that government spending is out of control, that we are on the road to ruin, that we are taxed enough already. While politically useful, these sentiments have little basis in reality. This graph shows federal revenues from taxes and spending on all programs as a percentage of gross domestic product or as a share of the economy. Aside from a sharp spike in spending during World War II, the pattern is pretty consistent with government revenue and spending hovering around one-fifth of the economy, the budgetary gap widening slightly in recent years as a consequence of the national recession. If we look a little more closely at the revenue side, the picture and the distribution of the tax burden becomes even clearer. Since 1945, individual income taxes, the blue line, as a share of the economy, have hovered around 8% and are now near their historic low of just under 6%. And corporate income taxes, the red line, have fallen steadily. From over 7% at the end of the war, near the same level as individual taxes, to barely 1% today. This graph shows how the source of federal revenues has changed over time. The blue bar is the individual income tax, which in the late 1930s accounted for about 20% of federal revenues. The yellow bar is the payroll tax, collected from employers and workers to pay for Social Security and unemployment insurance, and later Medicare. This was about 10% in the late 1930s, still fairly early in the history of those programs. The red bar is the corporate income tax, accounting for another 20% of federal revenue in the late 1930s. And the brown bar is excise and other taxes, these are mostly taxes on specific goods and services, like alcohol, gasoline, and tobacco, and they still accounted for over half of federal revenues in the late 1930s, although this share was shrinking fast. The importance and the share of the individual income tax jumped during World War II when the Revenue Act of 1942 established the practice of withholding taxes at source. And for much of the post-war era, we see a gradually increasing share of revenues drawn from individual income and payroll taxes, climbing from about 50 to over 80 percent of total revenues between 1950 and 1980. Meanwhile, the corporate tax share has fallen steadily, from around 30 percent in the Eisenhower era to barely 6 percent shown here in the wake of the Reagan era tax cuts. Today, corporate taxes make up around 8 percent of federal revenues. Similarly, the marginal tax rate for the highest income bracket has fallen steadily since its peak in the 1950s. As we face the argument that only tax cuts can galvanize growth, it's important to note that the heyday of post-war expansion from the late 40s into the late 1960s featured the highest marginal and the highest corporate tax rates in modern American history. And our tax system certainly does not disadvantage us in international competition. Among our peers, taxes as a share of the economy range from 20 to 50 percent, with an average for the member countries of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development of about one-third. The U.S. falls at the outer end of this distribution, suggesting not only that our tax burden is not a problem, but that we have considerable room to raise revenues in support of important public services. Current tax politics, unfortunately, not only exaggerate our tax burden, but also ignore much of what we get in return, including important public services, infrastructure, public resources like parks, public safety, and of course, our valued social programs.